Welcome to a new and exciting season of Real School. I'm Vicki Pierre with Duval Schools Media. This year we've got a new look, a new theme, new hosts, but the same great stories. Soon we'll show you some students who are taking a step in the right direction by taking a stand against bullying. Our Matt Began has the story. And we're sitting down one on one with Dr. Nikolai Vidi in an interview you'll only see here. His take on the new school year and his vision for the district. We'll have those stories and much more, but now class is in session. Let's head to first period for our top story. From high tech gadgets to tenacious tykes, Duval Schools has wasted no time in rolling out new initiatives this school year. Our cameras are rolling on the first day of school as we watch students enjoy new levels of learning. The ABCs and 123s are no longer chalkboard exercises for Duval students. Students at RV Daniels Elementary got hands-on learning thanks to a new set of iPads. We watched special guest Dr. Nikolai Vidi get in on the fun. Perfect. Got it. <laughs> this school year, you can expect to see more high-tech instruction in Duval schools. Mayor Alvin Brown, along with school board members Paula Wright and Jason Fisher, joined Dr. Vidi at Reigns High School, where he talked to students about new offerings this school year. An extended school day, which he says will give students a chance to expand their interests. What we're trying to do at Reigns and throughout the county is give you more elective classes. So still want you to make sure that you work hard in reading, math, science, and writing. But it, in classes like these are important for you to have exposure. It shows that the superintendent is really investing uh, into our city. He's investing into teachers and students. He's putting the resources where we need to put them. You can also expect to see some noticeably younger students this school year. For the first time, the district has added the voluntary pre-kindergarten programs, or VPK, to non-Title I schools. After all, early learning is key to a child's academic success. Finally, expect to see more classroom libraries and an emphasis on reading in schools throughout the district. Check out these books. They belong to April Shackelford, our district's Teacher of the Year. Okay, so let's try that. With all of these exciting additions, we can tell this will be a successful school year, sure to go down in the books. Students aren't the only ones headed back to the classroom. Our brand new Parent Academy is in full swing and moms and dads are looking to get high marks in parental involvement and student achievement. But as our Matt Began reports, we just had to kick this academy off with lights, camera, and action. And Matt, free popcorn too, right? Vicki, you're absolutely right. We're not talking about just any matinee. We're talking about an educational experience for the entire family. Families headed to the Sunray Cinema in Five Points for the hottest ticket in town, a special showing of Finding Nemo. They not only got free admission, they were also treated to free popcorn and drinks. Now that looks good. Families were really excited about a chance to enjoy a show. Before the movie, Superintendent Vidi greeted the crowd and encouraged parents to find ways to engage their children in discussions, even at the movies. Just asking simple questions like that builds critical thinking, um, ability with their children. Um, they become better in school, they ask more questions in schools, and they speak more, which builds their vocabulary. And so, tell us why y'all are out here this morning. Well, because I wanted to see in the movie with my parents. I think it's a, a wonderful cause. Um, it allows for families who are working to keep the kids to have an opportunity to do something fun with them that um, we might not be able to do otherwise. You know, times are pretty tight. Here's a cool fact. That little girl you just saw, that was her very first time ever to see a movie in a movie theater. And that's thanks to this free event. In fact, we found out that was the case for several families. How exciting. Another cool fact, our Teacher of the Year, April Shackelford, led the crowd in a critical thinking exercise, proving that a morning at the movies can be entertaining and educational. Now the Parent Academy is much more than just fun activities. The Academy also provides free courses for parents with titles like 24-7 Dad, After the Report Card, and so much more. These courses are offered all over our city. To find out where you can register, go to www.duvalschools.org. Thanks, Matt. We'll catch up with you again soon. So for this next story, just imagine this. Hundreds of people, long lines, a long wait, all in the rain. It was the back to school giveaway at the Teacher Supply Depot. With the help of lots of volunteers and even a few board members like Paula Wright, Becky Couch, and Cheryl Grimes, teachers were welcomed and prepared for the new year. 
But we couldn't help but wonder, how much are teachers actually saving with the depot? Well, we decided to grab our calculators and take a closer look. The rain wasn't enough to dampen the spirits of the crowd lined up outside of the teacher supply depot. 250 through 255. One by one, Duval teachers filed into the school turned warehouse in search of classroom supplies, collecting everything from pens to paper and to paperback books. I am so, extremely excited. Like, I didn't even, I heard about this from my friend, and we were like, oh, we got to get down here and get some stuff. The first year teacher to be able to build my classroom this way, you couldn't ask for anything better. How much do you think you're saving just ballpark? By I would say here? at least $100 right now. Savings like that really add up for any teacher, especially when you consider what are some of the most popular items. One example, dry erase boards. Small ones can cost around $15, but large ones can run between $1 and $200. And what about paper? We know teachers need plenty of that all year round. One ream of paper usually can run from $5 to $15. If you were to buy enough for the whole school year, you can easily spend hundreds of dollars. Organizational items are always in demand. For instance, small binders are usually one or two bucks a piece, but larger ones can cost from five to ten dollars. That really adds up if you're buying for a classroom of students. The students can have the basic necessities they need to be successful. The teachers can infuse project-oriented learning into their classroom, which you know, we know that the learning gains are better if they have project-oriented learning. So you know, it gives them the things that they, they can do without going into their own pocket. Chris Buckley, founder of the Teacher Supply Depot, says she's seeing increasing numbers of teachers taking advantage of the depot. In the last three to four years, our volume of teachers have increased. We have about 2,000 more teachers come over the course of a year. Um, our giveaways went from about 250 a month to almost 500 a month, so things almost doubled. Based on the feedback we got, it's uh, really helpful. This is phenomenal. I would like to say thank you. We don't think that appreciation will be going down anytime soon. Now seems like the perfect time to catch up with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Nikolai Vidi. Let's toss it over to Matt Began, who's joining us in the studio. Matt. Thanks, Vicki. Dr. Vidi, thanks for joining us. Uh, a lot of changes have been happening um, this school year. Uh, VPK has been added, uh, more technology in all the classrooms, uh, and we're also seeing longer school days. What other changes are going on? Well, for the most part, uh, those are some of our most exciting initiatives. I would say this year's focus is about uh, implementation and making sure that what we, the programs, initiatives, some of what you named, are, are implemented at a high level. Um, but it's a lot of um, the focus going into this year is about the way of work and how we support teachers and, and principals. And this year, very excited, coming off a very successful teacher academy and coaching academy, our focus this year at schools is helping teachers teach at a higher level. And what that means is helping teachers move instruction to where they have on, they give ownership to students, where students teachers aren't doing all the talking and doing the instruction, but releasing to students so that they can own the material, uh, they can talk about it, think about it, uh, synthesize it, analyze it, and move to a more problem-solving base level of instruction, a standards-based instruction, where we're thinking about what students should know at the end of the lesson or at the end of the quarter, at the end of the year, um, and, and making sure that after we teach that, they they actually learn it and absorb it. And so we're trying. We've created new structures in our schools where teachers are meeting together. They're creating lesson plans together. They're watching one another teach. Every school across the district has a reading coach. Many have math coaches. Those are master teachers that went to our coaching academy to work with students or teachers in the classroom with modeling lessons, facilitating that common planning. So they're analyzing data together. They're learning from one another. And we're working a lot with principals and assistant principals to better support teachers so that they're not going in the classrooms from a compliance point of view, meaning is the, are they at this page, um, at this point of the year, are certain things up on the board, but rather to focus on high level teaching and that students are really engaged and interested in the content, content and, and that they're absorbing what they're being taught. So putting it in an in, in, in authentic uh, and aggressive support from the district so that schools aren't functioning in isolation and they don't feel supported, but making sure that the lines of communication are clear, that the expectations are clear, but that we're balancing accountability with support, starting with the district, to schools, and then um, obviously into the classroom. Another uh, 
program within our district is the Parent Academy. I understand how it helps parents, but how does it help our students? Uh, it's a good question. I think any every every student is better served when their parents are more engaged in, in their education. Uh, f some students may not want that because they, there's more scrutiny, there's no, more accountability, more oversight, more questions being asked, but ultimately that better serves the student. So when we think about the Parent Academy, it focuses on three major areas. One, empowering parents to be um, better advocates for their children educationally. Um, and then the other focus is how do we help parents be better parents? Issues with, with discipline, anger management, conflict resolution. And then we help parents, the third piece is how do we help parents be um, wholer as people um, so that they feel more comfortable being parents. So that's job skills and financial literacy. But in the end, all those things go about creating a parent that's whole, uh, that feels more comfortable helping their child, problem solving with their child, advocating for their child, and in the end that makes um, the, the student um, better supported, better cared for, and hopefully um, to do better in school. And as you know, October is Bullying Awareness Month. Um, what is the district doing to uh, get that word out? Well, um, just this last week we uh, promoted uh, the Play Bully, uh, where we had a former uh, student from the Jacksonville area um, uh, it's a, a nationally acclaimed play about his experience being bullied and uh, we had a separate night uh, exclusively for district personnel, guidance counselors, principals, assistant principals, deans of discipline, um, and even teachers sh uh, showed up on, on Friday and then over the weekend as well. But that was just one initiative to highlight bullying and for a district and school-based administrators and, and personnel to just see um, that story and hear the story and reflect on what's happening in their own classroom and how they can work better to prevent bullying. We've also uh, specifically trained our Dean of Disciplines, even our security guards, our, our, our police officers in bullying prevention to think about bullying, to try to make better connections with children so that they feel comfortable telling an adult that they're being bullied. Um, and also we have to start training our students um, better to then diffuse bullying and to advocate for bully prevention. Um, we're also, um, as a district, we created a hotline, um, 390 call, um, because we're in, in it, it, the catchy phrase is call out bullying. And I, and I, although it's catchy and it might sound um, childish on a certain level, we want it to be something that resonates with kids. Mm -hmm. And we want even adults to take ownership of calling out bullying. If it happens, uh, denounce it. If it happens, tell an adult. If it happens, question the bully. Um, uh, force the bully to recognize how they're doing harm so that we're holding each other accountable to creating environments where children feel safe and comfortable. Dr. Vitti, thanks for coming in. Thank and we'll you. see you a little bit later in the show. Hey Vicki, back to you. Thanks Matt. We have much more coming up on Real School including a much closer look at Bullying Awareness Month. Coming up on Real School, we have front row seats to the nationally acclaimed play, Bully, which has, by the way, sold out performances in New York and in DC. Watch as this cast of one puts on an inspiring performance for Duval teachers. Plus, we'll show you how students are using song and dance to add to this message. Don't change the channel, Real School will be right back. I remember being a student at Terry Parker High School. I made good friends and participated in everything from intramural sports to the National Honor Society. Being the co-captain of the debate team taught me more than anything. I learned how to look at all sides of an issue. My teachers showed passion in every classroom every day and showed me the joy of learning. I'm the former mayor of Jacksonville and current president of the University of North Florida. I'm John Delaney, a proud graduate of Duval Schools. Welcome back to Real School. October is Bullying Awareness Month, and for one Jacksonville native, this hits very close to home. That's why Lee Kaplan says he's putting a face and a story to this message. You could feel the anticipation at San Marcos Theater Jacksonville. One by one, educators made their way through the doors, ready to take in the performance and learn powerful lessons. As teachers grabbed their seats, the star of the show took to the stage, grabbing the attention of the crowd. He was preparing for the fight of his life, the fight against bullying. 
really for me, it's, it's uh, hearing what I went through and uh, being able to acknowledge that perhaps that's going on uh, in, in, uh, for the children, for the kids, that that's going on, whether it's in their lives or perhaps their, their bystanders who you know, have, have seen this. Lee Kaplan is the man behind the play Bully. He tells us this play would have never come to pass had he not discovered his old journal during a visit to his childhood home. In it, he chronicled his experiences with bullying during his sixth grade year. Yeah, I discovered some of the things that I had written at the time, um, you know, which brought back more memories, of course, from that year, the sixth grade year, uh, seventh and eighth grade year. and. Uh, and it's really it was an eye-opening experience. It, it just sort of occurred to me and I said, you know, I bet I could structure a show. I bet I could write a show based on what I went through. Kaplan says he spent months not only putting the show together with a team, but also traveling the country performing the show. Thanks to a partnership with Regions Bank, more than 200 Duval County teachers were treated to a special performance of Kaplan's show. Sixth grade teacher Kathy Hunt says she knew she had to come. It takes bravery <laughs> to face a bully. Um, I, you know, bullying's been around forever, and unfortunately, I still see some examples. I hear about more, but you know, it, it's prevalent. As you watch the play reflect, again, I see this happening. I may see it happening. How can I? What role can I play to create a culture in my school so that? Students feel comfortable talking to me when they're feeling bullied. Following the performance, teachers had a chance to ask questions and also learn about resources within the district and the community. I want people to have dialogue. I want people to, you know, self-examine and to bring my, uh, you know, my abilities as an actor to this and to jumpstart and spark dialogue. I think is it's it's an absolute honor and a blessing to be able to do that. Now we've dedicated an entire podcast to a more in-depth interview with playwright Lee Kaplan. To hear the conversation, just head to iTunes and search Duval Schools Media. Duval Middle School students are also getting into step with bullying prevention. Matt Began has more on how a group of talented students danced the summer away in the name of one powerful message. Hey Matt. Hey Vicki. It was the perfect way to wrap up the Summer Bridge Academy and they got their message across in a very creative way. Check out those smooth moves. As part of their final performance in the Summer Bridge Academy, students step to the beat while illustrating an important message, the importance of taking a stand against bullying. These performers attended the Summer Bridge Academy at Kernan, Lakeshore, Mandarin, and Rebalt Middle Schools. They worked hard to make sure their show not only entertained, but also educated. I spoke to several students about the Academy, and I can tell you they really took these lessons to heart. If you saw one of your friends being bullied, what would you do? I would stick up. And did you learn that here? Yeah. I learned not to bully, to be careful in how to spot out bullies and how to be together. And what would you do if you saw bullying happening? Um, tell a teacher or stick up for the people who are getting bullied. We do want to remind you the district has launched a safe, anonymous, and confidential tool to encourage and support reports of bullying. It's a special hotline and the number is 390-CALL. This hotline is manned by trained psychologists who will ensure that each and every call is investigated and resolved. And you can choose to remain anonymous. Again, that number is 390-CALL. Make the call today and help make our schools safe. Vicki, back to you. 390-CALL, what a great number to remember. Thank you so much, Matt. Now we are in our final stretch of Real School. After the break, I'm sitting down with our superintendent of schools, Dr. Nikolai Vitti, talking about the topics that matter to you. It's an interview you'll only see here. Plus, these pictures are worth more than a thousand words. We'll show you what priceless works of art are on display at the district administration building. Don't change the channel. Real School will be right back. I remember walking the halls of New Stanton School getting a great education, and playing football. Earning my diploma is one of my proudest moments. It was the key to my success. In every classroom, every day, I learned with hard work, I can do anything. I'm the former sheriff of Jacksonville and current president of my alma mater, Edward Waters College. I'm Matt Glover, 
a proud graduate of Duval Schools. The next time you visit district headquarters, you won't help but notice brand new art. You'll find these pieces along the halls and in conference rooms. And if you think these subjects look familiar, well, you are correct. They are all Duval County students. And check out this piece inside of the Klein Auditorium. This giant mural is actually made up of hundreds of smaller canvases, all made by Duval students and families. Pretty impressive. None of this would have been possible without volunteers and partnerships with the Cummer Museum of Arts and Gardens, the Mayo Clinic, and the Jacksonville Public Education Fund. Welcome back to Real School and joining us for our final segment of the show is Dr. Nikolai Vitti. And I know you know better than anyone, this has been a really busy school year, but I don't think the average person understands how much preparation uh, took place over the summer. So talk to us about the trainings held for teachers and coaches. Well, um, I think the training that happened over the summer for our coaches and, and, and teachers really defines our way of our new way of work with our school district and the commitment to focus more of our time, resources, and energy on developing our, teacher, our teachers and our future leaders. At the end of the day, um, when we look at what, of our, what is our challenge moving forward and, and becoming a better and a stronger district and improving the uh, level of, of instruction in our classroom, it comes down to human capital and human capital related to our teachers and our, our current leaders and future leaders. But as a district, we need to take ownership of that. That's our core mission to develop uh, educators and leaders for the future and in, in our current ones as well. And, and this year, um, we trained over 6,000 teachers over the summer um, and, and hundreds of future coaches, so those are instructional coaches that work with teachers in the classroom, um, and the feedback was uh, outstanding. We did surveys at the end of um, uh, each session to ask teachers and coaches how they felt about the level of preparation, the, the relevancy of the training, and whether it was effective and will improve their practice and overwhelmingly teachers and coaches felt that it was and I think we're starting to see a different way of teaching in a classroom to move away from teaching to the test and teaching to standards where students are problem solving, they're doing more inquiry based instruction, uh, they're talking to one another more, they're justifying their answers so uh, at the end of the day this was about making sure that we are being very clear with what our expectations are as far as what we should see in the classroom, but helping teachers arrive to that point by supporting them with training led by the district, not vendor driven, not contracted, um, but our own employees at our district level um, um, providing that kind of high level training. And I think that's what an organization should be um, doing when it comes to developing uh, human capital. And we know that uh, staff weren't the only ones working this summer. A lot of students were in school uh, with summer academies. In fact, the New York Times did a pretty high profile article about the program. So how do summer academies differ from the typical summer school that most people are accustomed to? Right, it's a good question. Uh, I think summer school is, is related. Everyone associates summer school with remediation. And we try to move summer school to more enrichment based, where certainly students are refining the deficiencies or areas of, of deficiency or areas that they have to grow in academically. But we wanted the summer experience to be about all the things that I met, just mentioned that we talked about with the Teacher Academy, which is having students actually apply what they're learning to do more authentic reading, um, discussion of text, and also connecting that to field trips. Uh, we also saw the, um, the incorporation of more technology in the classroom, more students using uh, iPads or laptops. And so it was more authentic, more engaging, and the feedback from teachers and students and parents were all very high. And I think the opportunity lies to replicate that during the school year. So teachers felt a bit more comfortable with experimenting, being creative, and not just thinking that this test was going to be over their, their, uh, their shoulders at the, end of the, at the end of the year. So they're, they're more likely to do things differently. But we're hoping to take the practices that we um, implemented in the summer and apply them to the regular school year. And so throughout this show, we've talked about uh, a lot of these new changes that are being implemented. What else can we expect the rest of the school year? I, I, you know, as we move forward, uh, it's not about the changes any longer. It's about the refinement of the systems that we've put into place and the infrastructure that we've tried to develop. In, in about a year's time, it's, it'll be almost a year for me in November, and, and that year has been about changing the infrastructure, so the personnel, the structure of the personnel, the organization, the training, 
um, some personnel changes at the school level and the district level, but that was all about creating new processes and new systems. Now, 13, 14, it's about implementation. So I don't really um, see many more changes occurring this year. I really instead see us focus on implementation and doing what we said we were going to do on behalf of children. And, and that's not going to happen overnight. You have to constantly ask yourself what's working, what's not, what needs to be done differently. And so um, overall, few changes, but focus on implementing what we said we were going to implement well. Well, I know we're going to hear more from you throughout the season, so thank you so much again well, for joining you. us. We appreciate it. And let's toss it now back to Matt Began, who has more exciting news about Duval Schools Media. Hey, Matt. Thanks, Vicki. This year, we're excited to announce that Duval Schools Media is expanding to podcasts. These podcasts allow us to bring you information and interviews on the go and at your convenience. Be sure to check out our main website at www.duvalschools.org for the latest episodes. You can also find all of our podcasts on iTunes by searching Duval Schools Media. Vicki, back to you. Before we go, we have one more piece of exciting news for you. New student hosts. We have been auditioning many talented students throughout the district and we'll be revealing exactly who made the cut on the next episode of Real School. Be sure to tune in. Well, that is it for us today. Thank you so much for making Real School your source for Duval News. All right, guys, class is dismissed. Have a great day. See you next month. Okay, one more time. There we go. All right. Uh... I do this face the whole time, but. <laughs> yeah, take the so I can see it. Our brand new parent academy is in full screen. Ah, screen. <laughs> <laughs>